there are many different ways to do scheduled tasks or tasks that run independently from a user interface. But sometimes you just need a simple task that runs in the background of an application. In this video, we're going to be looking at background jobs in ASP.NET Core, including how to create them, how to run them, and when they can be useful. Now, this video is a standalone training video that will teach you a specific coding topic. Every Monday, I provide videos just like this. On Thursdays, I release a podcast video that covers the topics software developers need to know that don't include writing code. If you're looking for a sequential training on a topic with a real world focus, you can check out IamTimCorey.com where I have dozens of courses meant to prepare you to be a software developer. If you're just getting started, check out the master courses. These courses are designed to start you at the beginning and get you job ready by the end. Okay, let's jump over to Visual Studio. We'll start by creating an API. So new project, .NET Core Web API project, ASP.NET Core Web API. And let's call this background demo and background demo app. Wait for this to create. And, oh, we have to say .NET 8, no authentication, yes to HTTPS. No Docker, yes to open API support. Leave the un unchecked, the do not use top level statements and don't check the use controllers. We use the minimal API structure. So this is a minimal API, It'll be really simple in how it looks and how it works, which is great, that's what we want. Notice they're putting the .http file in by default now, which is kind of nice. And in here, let's uh, strip out the stuff we don't need. So let's get rid of the the summaries and the the forecast. Get rid of that. Get rid of the internal record. And so now this right here is our application. Pretty simple stuff. No endpoints yet. We'll get there. So now what we're going to do, we can get rid of, um, and that's, that's mashing together for some reason now. Um, it's a newer thing that's happening in Visual Studio if I report it yet. But I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this for now. We don't need it for this demo, and I'm not going to rewrite it. Um, that's not the focus of this demo. So what we're going to do is create a background service, and we're going to create um, some sample data. So let's start with sample data. So control shift A, we'll say sample data.cs. And the idea here is that maybe you have data that you want to um, have a cache. So for example, on the suggestion site, I have all the data loaded into Redis, and then we periodically refresh that cache. And the way I peri periodically refresh it is by saying, hey, you know, if you request data, is that data more than X minutes old? And if it is, then go get fresh data and put that in the cache and give it to the user. But the downside there is that the, the person who goes to that page when no other traffic has been there for a little bit gets a bit of a, a lag because they have to wait for the data to load all the way from the database, which is a little bit slower. Now it's not much different, but, um, but still, what we could do instead is what we're going to kind of demonstrate here. And that is we could have that cache instead of being refreshed by users hitting it, we could refresh that cache on a timer and say every so many minutes or every so many seconds, we're going to refresh that data with new data um, or get the new data and make sure the cache is up to date. That way, no user ever gets um, a call that doesn't have a fresh cache. So let's start with a kind of a, um, a sample data. This is going to be in pretending it's the cache. Okay. It's not actually cache, but we're pretending it is. We're going to say public concurrent bag. And a concurrent bag is going to be, um, what that's for is it allows us to basically have a list or something similar to a list, a collection that is um, accessible from multiple threads. That way we don't have a problem of, of uh, thread locking or other issues that cause problems with 
accessing a, um, a non-thread safe list. So this is a thread safe list. This will allow us to access this thread from, or this object from multiple threads at the same time. So with that, we're gonna instantiate as well. This is gonna be our, our data. That's, that's all it is, is our data. We're pretending this is the data that comes, that is in cache or uh, would be where it comes from cache. So right now it's empty and that's all we really need for this data. But let's come over here and put this into our services. So builder.services.add singleton. And we're gonna add the sample data and control dot to add the using directive for that. And so now we have our sample data, no interface, it's just sample data. And that's gonna be a singleton, which means that everybody gets access to the same sample data. So yours isn't different from mine, even if we access it you know, from different computers. So that right there is not necessarily what you do in most cases for data, but in, in this case, it's really helpful because it allows us to see that data, even if we refresh or go to a different browser. Okay, so now I've got some sample data set up, which again, is just blank for right now. We'll take care of that with some background tasks. Let's go ahead and create a, a background, let's call it background refresh. So this is our background task. All right, so we're going to in here say colon I hosted service and then control dot to implement that interface, which let's escape out of the suggestions here because it really put a lot in there. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to also implement I disposable and control dot to implement that interface. Let's move the dispose though. Um, let's move that down to down here at the end because I, I don't want it at the top. I think it makes more sense to have it exposed near the bottom. All right, so we have no the throw new not implement exceptions for all three of these. We've got to do something with them. But this right here, I hosted service, allows us to say this class will run in the background. And notice that when you implement it, we have I or start async and stop async. And so this is what's gonna be run when we start this background task. And this is what's gonna run when we stop the background task. So in this case, I probably want a timer. So I'm gonna say private timer, make it uh, nullable, and we'll say underscore timer. And the other thing I wanna do is I wanna grab through CTOR and I wanna grab the sample data and we'll do control dot to create and assign that field. So now we have data, um, which is that sample data class, okay? Because the background refresh is going to update the sample data. So with that, because we're bringing in here, um, we now have access to it in the start and the stop. And in this case, we're going to create a new method. I'll create in between Actually, I'll wait on that. I want to do it automatically and show you what, um, what it would do. Okay, so in the start, we're going to say, hey, start this timer. So we're going to say timer equals new timer. And it has some defaults here from IntelliCode. I'm going to accept them for now. And their default here is do work. Let's not do do work. Let's say add to cache. I can say control dot to generate the method add to cache. And notice that it has one parameter, a nullable object called state. So we can leave that alone, but that's now our add to cache. And we can leave the state as null and the time span is zero. Um, and then down here, the time span is from seconds. And we're saying every five seconds. And let's change this for our demo purposes to every one second, which is very, very fast. Probably not what you want, but in our case, it is what we want because you want it to run every second and say, you know, we've done something, we've done something, we've done something. So 
Then after this, we need to return something so we can return a completed task. Since we didn't do any asynchronous work, um, we don't have a task to return. So we return task.completed task, meaning we're done. OK. Now in the um, add to cache, this method where we do all of our real work. So let's do something here in the add to cache, which is underscore data dot data dot add. And the suggestion is the date time now, but let's do something a bit more than that. Let's just say the new data was added at date time dot now. And let's just do a um, two to time to short time string. And we need to put a open close parenthesis at the end of that. So there we now have a string be or a, yeah, string being added to our data every time this add to cache gets run. When it's being run, every time the timer ticks. When does it tick? Every second. So now every second we're adding one of these strings to our cache, to our data. So we aren't refreshing our cache necessarily. This is where we do a refresh of cache, but we're more just adding data to a, to a list. But that way we can see every time this runs because we can look at that list in our API. Now, the other thing we need to do is in our stop, we need to stop that timer. So timer, if it's not null, change, we set the timeout to infinite, meaning you never run again. And then we return the task.completed task. So again, we don't do anything with an asynchronous call, but we can say we're complete. So stopping it sets a timer to infinite. And then dispose, we're going to say, timer, if it's not null, then dispose of it. Okay, that way we properly get rid of the timer in this background task. So that's the whole background task, okay? We've got the start, which is where we initialize a new timer. We've got the stop, where we turn the timer off. We have the dispose, which gets rid of the timer. And we have the add to cache, which executes every time the timer ticks, which right now is every one second. And again, you can change this time span to be from minutes five and then say every five minutes, refresh the cache or whatever makes sense for you, or maybe every minute, but then you have another timer that checks for a different cache. And so you have multiple timers or whatever you wanna do, but this allows you to choose what happens when you start this background service. Okay, so now we have this background service ready to go. How do we use it? Well, to do so, we come back over to program.cs and we can say builder.services.addhostedService background refresh. And so a hosted service, it knows what to do this and knows how to start that service. And so it will start the service properly. It will run the service and when we you know, and the application is going to close it and also dispose of that timer properly. So now we have the hosted service, which by the way, is going to pull sample data from dependency injection properly because we have this constructor right here asking for it. And now let's create an endpoint that will give us all these messages. App.map git. And we'll say slash messages. And it's already telling what it thinks I want, which is pretty close. Uh, pass in a reference to sample data. We need the, the sample data to then display the data. And let's do one more thing. We're going to say order. Because the, the uh, concurrent bag just kind of throws things in, especially with an asynchronous application, it might not be in order. So we're ordering this every time we call this map get just so it's a little bit more clean when we see it. So that's it for the entire endpoint. We have a slash messages, which we it just returns back the data from our sample data. That's it.
Okay, so let's run this application, wait for it to start. And when we do, we'll be able to use Swagger to test out this slash messages endpoint and see how long it's been running. So messages, try it out, execute, and notice down here, you'll see that their new data was added and I didn't put seconds in here. So let's change that because otherwise you don't see the, the seconds to, um, to long time string. Let's try this again because when it's just hours and minutes, I'm not gonna wait minutes for you to see the new version. So messages, try it out, execute. And there we go. Now we have 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So we have uh, seven entries when I hit execute. But let me execute again. And this time I have quite a few more entries because every time I, what in the background, it's adding new data to that sample data. So right now, 3134 is the last one. If I execute, well, 3134 is right here, but we have all these others because of the fact I was talking during that time. So this shows you how to have a background job running in your ASP.Core application, whether it's a, um, a Blazor application or an API application or a Razor Pages or MVC, you can have these background services running that do something. And, you know, a good example or a, an example that would be um, probably very useful is having it update your, your cache data. So, you know, if you, if you do have a cache, you can refresh it without having to have a user do it for you, which means the users always get the freshly cached data rather than having to generate that cache um, and potentially having a bit of a performance hit for doing so. So really simple in some ways, how to do a, a background service. Don't go too crazy. I mean, it, you don't want to have something that brings down the overall application because you're doing too much in the background. And there are other ways of doing background tasks, for example, scheduled tasks. You know, you've got uh, courts and hang fire and others that do a great job at that, especially if you have multiple. We'll look at those at some point, but, um, if you have just a simple thing you want to run in the background or something that's directly connected to your application, this is a great way to do it. It's just an I hosted service. And then you add that to your services and it will start up the application. It will run the application. It will stop at the application. It will do all those good things and allow you to run things in the background. All right. Hope this has been helpful. If you want this code, there's a link down in the description to go to a page to fill out a form and get this data sent to you via email. If you ever have a problem with getting that, just go to help at imtimcorey.com, send an email there, and they'll help you out with it. But thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.